Hello and welcome to the show. If all art is theft, as Picasso said, then are writers just stealing scenes from day-to-day -day reality? Author David Shields is in the studio to get to the bottom of this conundrum. After writing on mortality, war photography and literary form, Shields has worked with actor James Franco on a project that treads a blurry line between fact and fiction. Will I write a book that will jeopardize my marriage? We shall find out. Every movie is supposed to have a twist. David Shields, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for well, having me here. Your book, Reality Hunger, is being released in its French translation as Besoin de Riel. Let's start with the form. It's a montage or collage of various fragments, quotes from writers, thinkers, and some contributions from yourself as well. It's not continuous prose. So what would you call this form, and why did you choose it? That's a really crucial question. To me, the book is what I would call literary collage. It's a book of 618 aphorisms, or aperçu. And as you say, it's a mixture of my own contributions, my remix, my remix versions of other people's words. And to me, if the book works well, the reader sort of scratches their own head and says, is this Shields? Is this Schoenberg? Is this Stravinsky? Does it really matter? The book is an attempt to try to revitalize literary art for the, the 21st century. I've been wandering around Paris the last week and seeing these posters for this new novel by Salman Rushdie. Everywhere you go, you see this rather magisterial portrait of Salman Rushdie. And no offense to Sir Rushdie, but that seems over to me. The magisterial presence of the godlike writer seems to me that we are consumed by the real through social media and that we, more fiction seems to me, more bubble wrap, more dreamscape, and that we're craving, as Kafka says, for a literature that breaks the frozen ice within us. Okay, well, let's get a taste of your version of The Real. Could you read us an extract from sure. the book? Every artistic moment from the beginning of time is an attempt to figure out a way to, sm to smuggle more of what the artist th thinks is reality into the work of art. Zola said, every proper artist is more or less a realist according to his own eyes. Brock said, the goal is to get as close as I could to reality. Think of Chekhov's diaries, E.M. Forster's commonplace book, F. Scott's Fitzgerald's The Crack Up, much his best book. My intent is to write the Ars Poetica, for a burgeoning group of interrelated but disconnected artists in a multitude of forms who are breaking larger and larger ch chunks of, quote, reality into their work. Reality, as Nabokov never got tired of reminding us, is the one word that is meaningless without quotation marks. Okay. Now, the quotes, as, as the one you've read there, aren't attributed on every page. So if the reader wants to know who said what, we have to refer to an appendix. But you've written in the appendix that it's only there for copyright reasons, that we shouldn't be reading it. Why is that? Well, the way that I like to think about it is, and I think that one of the epigraphs of the book goes to this, Graham Greene, the esteemed British writer, saying... When you are not sure, you are alive. To me, art is most exciting when you feel like you're trapped between floors of a department store and you're sort of lunging around in the dark. Are we in lingerie, sporting goods, clothing wares, furniture? To me, the moment that you know something's a romantic comedy or you know this is a straightforward BBC documentary, 
things get really boring and really predictable. So this blurry line that you mentioned, this questioning the notion of fact and fiction, that some fiction is perhaps more real than the genre that we call non-fiction, it seems very topical right now given the political climate. There's a lot of op-eds being written saying that we're in a post-factual age. What do you think about that? Well, it's hard not to make connections, isn't it, between some of the things that I'm saying and contemporary so-called post-reality televisual politics, I would say, you know, it's not as if I'm sort of endorsing a completely subject, subjective view of reality. I'm trying to argue for the way that art feels now. I'm not trying to endorse a sort of Trumpian presidency but speaking of this presidential debate that's going on right now before right. the elections, there is the question of fact-checking what politicians right. are saying. Do you think that's possible, desirable? I think that it is, but I think there was a very smart essay recently written about Trump by James, Har uh, James Parker in The Atlantic in which he compared Trump to the Sex Pistols. And they're basically saying Trump has a punk appeal, that Trump does appeal to people who are bored by contemporary reality, numbed by contemporary social media. And I think what's happened in most American presidential elections is the most real, pre the most real candidate tends to win. Obama seemed more real than McCain or Bush seemed read as more the person to go have a beer with than Gore. And I think Trump does have, to me, legitimate performance chops and reads to a casual viewer as somehow more real than Hillary. Which is certainly important in the televisual world. Exactly. Indeed. Now, just to move to other projects, you've collaborated on a couple of projects with actor and director James Franco after he was a student of yours exactly. in a creative writing well, class. You wrote a book together, I think it's about the singer Lana Del Rey. Now, can you tell me what interests you about her and her celebrity? Well, in a way, it's not. It's funny that you're showing there some clips from a film that James and I worked on with with another former student, Caleb Powell. I'm very interested in, in collaboration and going back again toward Salman Rushdie as, you know, the magisterial writer. I sort of no longer believe in great male genius. I'm interested in, in collaboration and fragmentation, collage. I'm interested in art that feels very contemporary. But anyway, Lana Del Rey, is a friend of James Franco's. James is my former student. James had written a series of, of notes about Lana Del Rey. Franco gave me the notes, which I've turned into a sort of one-act play. And I would say that project is still a bit in, in legal limbo. OK, well, we'll as, look forward to that coming Yeah, the book soon. is called Real and imaginary conversations with Lana Del Rey. And I think that we have to make clear that, that readers understand that it's made up. OK, well, just briefly, we're finishing off with a man who didn't necessarily write about himself, but he definitely depicted himself repeatedly. That's Rembrandt. He has a new show at uh, the, in Paris here at the Musée Jacques Marc André. Uh, I hear that you're a fan of the Dutch master. What is it about Rembrandt's vision that you enjoy so much? Well, I absolutely worship Rembrandt's late self-portraits. And I went to the exhibit a couple days ago, and I have to confess to your viewing audience that I was bitterly disappointed by the show. No. I love Rembrandt to death. His self-portraits are the epitome of great art. But I found the exhibit is not really Rembrandt's self-portrait. It's really his very skillful, but not to me particularly vital portraits of his various friends, former teachers, family members, relatives. So in a way, it's not a bad way for us to perhaps complete our brief discussion is that art is most 
alive to me when the, the artist is picking at their own scabs, when things are most nervous, most doubtful, and most bloody. And I found these portraits rather skillful, but somewhat but somewhat dull. Okay, well, it's a personal, intimate view of his life, I believe. Precisely. David Shields, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank we'll, you so much for having me. We'll leave you with some of the highlights of that Rembrandt show. And Besoin de Riel is available in French and, of course, still in English. Remember to check out our website. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.